you know, and for the guys, me being one of those, I, I, I flew a Bonanza, 414, King Airs, whatever it may be before. You come in, you say, oh, I want to put it on the numbers every time. Put it on the numbers every time is easy compared to this. When you're really looking to say, I want to land it, something this big, when the wind's going on and you really can't see it as good as you may think as you look on the ground, you know, I have a lot of respect for these guys, for the Dans out there that can just put it on the line every single time. Oh. Suck girl, whoa! Hey. Got a cat calling sometime. Here we go. See the chat outside and then, yeah. Yeah, I'm Adam Gordon and I'm flying a Cub Crafters Carbon Cub EX2. Man, I grew up, my grandfather was a pilot, my mom was a pilot. Uh, got in my blood early on, man, and uh, once you get that taste, it's in you for a long time. So uh, after college, I went ahead and I could finally kind of afford it and moved in to get my pilot's license and uh, integral part of, part of my business now and how we, how we operate. And that business is? Uh, we do industrial construction all over the country, you know, all over the North America for that matter. So, so we use the airplane almost daily to move ourselves around, move parts around, move people around. Without it, we would have to have three times the people that we have. We know in the market that we have right now, having good people is part of your success. So having the airplane stretches us out. It's a little time machine for us. It's a bit of a storytelling time. You have two stories to tell. You have a competitive pilot story, and now you're the, the host. organization. Whatever you want to call it. You know, I feel like we better need a better name than host. I don't like that. The... I feel like it's a negative, like host, like a parasite. You no, know? What is it? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Not like ambassador or no. something. Or, I don't know. We need, we need a new catchphrase. Commissioner. The commissioner. Yeah, that's some good shit. I do like that. <clears throat> the commissioner. Yeah, I need so that yeah on my, the commissioner. I need, I, need that on, I need that on my shirt. <laughs> it's official. 2024. It's, it's, it's almost in the yeah, books. So it started uh, last year at Sulphur Springs at Lone Star Stole. I was talking with Eric and I was like, man, I'm really excited for what we got coming up at Swamp Stole next year. And he was like, man, I don't know if it's gonna happen. And I was like, whoa. whoa, whoa. Uh, I'm involved in a couple of different flying things we have in the community. I've always been big in economic development for South Louisiana. And I was like, well, we gotta fix this. This is something we gotta get on. He was like, well, I don't know. It's this and this, and, you know, you gotta, gotta step lightly when you get into that because it's a person that's saying, I'm retiring, I wanna lighten my load and uh, without stepping on and making somebody feel bad. So with that, I said I'd help Matt. And then Matt immediately said, no, it's yours, get after it. You know, and I was like, oh, I got three months. We gotta get to work, <laughs> you know? So uh, that's really how it all came about. And it was just kind of like, hey, here, let's keep it going. You know, there's not a lot of big aviation events around the country, if you go look, outside a little pancake fly-ins the third Saturday of every month, which is nothing wrong with that, I love them, but to have something where you can get a thousand people together, 50 competitors, and get out and race is really cool. It's a family style thing. Yeah, it's, um, you know, Thursday night, it was a natural thing for me. There's guys flew in for the weather, but even the guys that fly in early, I was like, look, y'all come to my hangar, I'm gonna cook dinner for you. Man, we ended up having 60 people at our hangar in Oakdale on Thursday night. We cooked steaks for everybody. It was that Louisiana, like, camaraderie, just come to my house, I'm a cook for you, and you're part of my family. You know, and you don't get that other places in the country. So it was, it was a big deal. We had them at our hangar, which is like our home. It was a great experience, and everybody was ranting and raving. You know, nobody else does this. And I've gone all over the country, and you know, you, you get a taco, or you get a hot dog, you know, but uh, to sit down and kind of have a steak and a, a cocktail or a glass of wine, whatever you like, and it was really something special. I, I enjoyed it, and that may be my favorite part of, of Swamp Stole 24 right now. So from an organizer standpoint, I'm my own worst enemy. I scrutinize myself more than anybody. Um, big things uh, in our industrial sector of work is infrastructure. If you set your infrastructure up properly, a lot of things go smoothly. Coming in on the back end of this, a lot of, we went with what the infrastructure was set up previously and we had some flaws there. And I got to see some of those come out during this. But what we did was we made some plans on the fly. Uh, improvisation on the ground is one of my best skill sets. So we took care of those as they came up and we made things work today. Uh, I think everyone was happy with it. We had a few people that kind of had to move some things around. That's okay. Uh, the mayor, the local police department worked with me to help facilitate not be, I want to use the term police. They didn't want to police us, they were there to help us. You know, and that's, that's welcoming 
you know, as an event coordinator to try to make some things happen. Our biggest thing was parking this year because of weather. But you know what? We're in South Louisiana. It's wet all the time. We got to be prepared for weather. So we're gonna we're gonna move forward with that next year and have some things that, that that's not gonna be a problem anymore. Other than that, the little things that popped up in the day were were minimal. Man, there was stuff to laugh about. You know, and uh, we moved on. It's, it's there were little problems to say when you have a big party and it's a good time. You know, like running out of cups or something. That's not a big problem to me. That's a thumbs up. So <laughs> I like the mud. Man, I'm telling you, the kids were playing. It was a great time. <laughs> it was wonderful. Would it be small slow if it didn't rain? I don't think so. We're going to have to run a water truck if it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so as a competitor, I want to say I'm a mechanic first before a pilot. And I love the intricacies of building an airplane specifically to do a certain job. About four or five years ago, I started building airplanes, learning what it takes to go into it, every part and piece. Maybe about eight months ago, I bought this Carbon Cub and we've really been critiquing that and getting it where we need it to be. And it has been such an interesting endeavor getting into developing. We've been working with some different uh, manufacturers on new parts and how things work. With that, the airplane flies different every time you make one of these iterations. You know, so it's a new learning experience every time we go through it. But today, I think we flew the airplane to the edge of its abilities. And that's what we're here to do at National Stole in its Swamp Stole to say, Look, I may not beat this guy, but I flew that airplane to the end of its abilities. You know, and that's something I, I told Levi this earlier today. He came in his stock Super Cub instead of his storage. And I said, man, you did a great job. And he goes, yeah, but everything was long. I said, but you flew the airplane to the end of its abilities. I watched you, you were smooth. You got everything you could get out of it. And that means you flew the best you possibly could. And I see that in different classes. You know, I commend Joel Dobson, I think's his name. He flies that 172 on the tail. Man, the most stable, pretty approaches you'll ever want to see out of somebody doing this kind of work. I'm envious. You know, I'm like, man, I wish I could do that every time like that. I work on that in my day-to-day -day flying. We, we fly around for fun from farm to farm, checking cows or whatever it may be. And you try to make that st same approach every time, time and time again. Be short, be where you need to be. And we bring that out here. And today, it went well. Of course, you always want, you know, I wish it was dry. You know, we could have braked harder, you know, but... Other than that, the wind worked for us. The airplane performed great. So I work with Cato on this project and I'm helping rep with them. So I mean, we're doing like this incredible new prop that nobody's ever seen. So it's like, it's just super cool to be a part of it. Was it possibly the same prop that was on that Moag? No. Okay, oh, okay. For no, it's not. It's a, it's a whole new airfoil mm. that you're not seeing on any airplane right now. And, uh, is and that's what the experimental world and the racing world gets to do is innovate. You know, this is our, our testing ground. We've we race on Sunday and sell on Monday. So there's some new parts that are, there's gonna be get some calls on Monday. So we're excited about it. Here in what we're doing, we're able to innovate based on this racing. And this is the testing ground that we broke through this where we can bring these ideas and concepts. We build them in the shop, we build them in the hangar, we test them and we come out here and we really put them to the test. I got some more of my Carbon Cub guys involved. They, had, they performed great today. I was happy, you know, like they were excited. You know, at the end of the day, I beat them, and that's all I was really worried about. <laughs> you know, we had our little our little thing going together to say, look, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Going to? Uh, there's a few little gentlemen's bets that, that uh, takes takes place, you know. But uh, all in all, it was wonderful. Who's what, buying the next round of golf? <sighs> not you, right? You won. Not me. I won. I'm super competitive. My world is if you're not going to win, you might as well lose. You know, it was so. I put them right there on the edge. They were all extremely close. You know, and for the guys, me being one of those, I, I, I flew a Bonanza 414, King Airs, whatever it may be before. You come in, you say, oh, I want to put it on the numbers every time. Put it on the numbers every time is easy compared to this. When you're really looking to say, I want to land <laughs> something this big, when the wind's going on and you really can't see it as good as you may think as you look on the ground, you know, I have a lot of respect for these guys, for the Dans out there that can just put it on the line every single time. Our off airport stuff, you have a little wiggle room in there, you know, if it's a sandbar that's 300 feet long, you kind of get lazy or complacent. You know, you got an airplane you can shut down in 100 feet with no problem. Well, as long as you end up in the water, you're gonna be okay, you know? So it's interesting to come out here and really push yourself into what you could be. And then we, we bring all that information back for our day-to-day -day flying. I fly my 414 better because I want to be right on those numbers and I can focus more on 
here's where we need to be exactly on my speed marks. And it makes all of us safer pilots. And, and we push that out to the crowd. We have a lot of GA guys come and they get to see somebody really hold it on the edge. We can go right to the razor's edge and not go over it. And that's where a good pilot comes into my book. I'm really excited for what National Stole can be. There's a lot of potential here. I can't wait till we are on the national stage and there's a lot of folks looking at it. I think we're right on the cusp of something big happening.